Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to another episode of Geeky and Drinking. My name is Eddie and I'm joined always by Ian. Yeah. And today we're coming at you uh, with our last episode of the year. So we got some good, you know, exciting stuff to talk about. Um, touch on Christmas stuff uh, and a little of this, a little of that. Uh, but first, you know, we want to uh, give a shout out to Hops and Grains. Uh, we are enjoying their Pale Mosaic. It's an American style IPA. Um, so we, I, I haven't tried this. Have you all tried it? No. I thought you tried it. No, I, 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 I didn't try this one. Oh so. yeah, we don't. I never seen these in stores here, so I thought yeah. I might be mistaken for another one. <laughs> yeah. No, so. these are uh, these are not available in uh, San Antonio at the moment. So we're. Uh, you know, happy and privileged to uh, get to try these here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and crack, crack some open right now. Cheers, guys. That's an IPA. Mm. <laughs> it's good. That's interesting. It's real good. So um, again, <clears throat> like Eddie said, we want to thank everyone at Hops and Grain. Um, in our last episode, we were uh, privileged to go to Austin, Texas to visit them. Uh, we want to thank uh, Josh and Sheila for uh, having us and for everyone else there, uh, Luke and Kelly, for um, treating us like, you know, family and friends. You know, it was, it was a wonderful experience, wonderful environment. Um, if, you, if you're ever in, in the Austin area, um, I suggest you go check out their tap room. Uh, it's real cool, it's real chill. Uh, they do have um, certain events going on, um, like just usual stuff that they do, trivia nights and stuff like that, comedy nights, I think every Friday or every other Thursday, Friday, Thursday, 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 or Thursday. Thursday, every Thursday. Um, yeah, so, you know, go check them out, um, and be sure to catch our, our uh, episode of us visiting in there, so. Yeah, and I mean, they just don't, uh, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a brewery, you know, and uh, but they don't just have beer, they also have coffee, um, so it, it's a... They also it's, have beer with your coffee yeah yeah so <laughs> so i mean they're open from 10 10 in 10 p.m uh seven days a week so go check them out uh, it's a nice like steven said there it's real real really chill over there so uh yeah once again thank you everybody over there but um uh if we seem a little down <laughs> i'm tired it's been a long day it's been uh, a long year it's been a long year yeah. but i mean steven just saw the eagles eagles lose <laughs> yeah, that's besides the point <laughs> Uh, we don't want to talk about old news or that that old news, but anyways, uh, I mean it's uh, this is gonna be our um, final episode for uh, this year for 2018. Uh, so we, just, we got a couple of topics that we want to touch on, uh, just little things here. Definitely want to do um, you know talk about some of our favorite stuff about the, the uh, holiday season. Um, you know, holiday season comes around. You got holiday movies that come out. I don't know about you guys, but I enjoy some of it. Um, you know, I got some of my favorites. I don't know if you guys have anything that you like, but you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, um, I mean, I don't know. Call me, <laughs> call me a Grinch. You know, I, I mean, I like Christmas. You know, I just can't stand Christmas music. <laughs> and it's all I hear this time of year, so it's kind of like, uh, but as far as movies, you know, there are a few, a few Christmas movies that I do like. But one that, one that came up, you know, one of the first ones that popped in my head and. I wish I could find it. I'm, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I could find it, like on Voodoo, or whatever. But um, I haven't seen it in a long time. It was Jingle All the Way with the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and Sinbad. Sinbad. Um, that and um, God, what was his name? The um, he was he was an actor that 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 was uh, that's no longer with us either. Uh, he was a real funny comedian. He was on SNL. God, I wish I can't think of his name right now. But yeah, I mean, now that that's the, for some reason that's the first movie that pops into my head. I want to see it again because I haven't seen it in a long time. But I just remember enjoying that movie a lot when watching it. Um, what's the first movie? What's the first holiday movie that comes into your head, Matt? That you you'd like to watch, you'd like to revisit, whatever. Die Hard. Die Hard. <laughs> Die Hard. <laughs> oh. And there's always this controversy of you know if is, is Die Hard a holiday movie? It's is a, it is it a Christmas movie? Just because of the time of year it actually falls in, but. Uh, it did not release around the Christmas time. Mm -hmm. I believe it was released sometime in July, in the eighties. That was or before my time. Yeah, way so, before. Yeah. Time, but. but I really did enjoy as a kid every Christmas time. Look, turn the TV on TBS to watch Christmas Story. Oh yeah. 
no. was the usual. It's yeah, it's no not a an original one, but it's something I always enjoyed watching when I was a kid and even in like my teen years. It was you know still a funny and enjoyable show. I mean, it's not show movie. <laughs> um, my mom always put it on. Um, and go to family events. It was beyond like twenty four seven, and wouldn't get tiring at all for some reason. You know, do you know what's kind of dumb? I mean, it's it's about Christmas story that I I'm not sure if it was uh, it was it's just a rumor or it actually was you know was was happening or yeah some people were petitioning to have uh, TBS I think they play right TBS the one that plays it uh, the, the uh, channel Christmas story yeah yeah that they were, that they were petitioning TBS to Stop showing a Christmas story 24 hours because, um, because it it uh it shows bu- bullying. I was like, but it's a, like, come relax, you know, calm down. But you gotta think of the you gotta think of the time. Yeah, era. that's also the a time era much. of of the movie that it takes place in. Uh, that the movie takes place in itself and the time era that it came out into. I mean, a lot of, a lot of movies, you know, during that time. You know, dealt with the bullying and you know uh, the, the, the the person being bullied, overcoming it. You know, yeah. Like, but it, I don't know. It's just like 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 come on, like relax. Uh, <laughs> just, but I mean, it, it's it's a sensitive subject, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm surprised you even asked me what my favorite movie is, man. Jeez, I don't care. Know, know what your know. favorite movie is? You don't know what is it? Just the uh, the Star Wars holiday special. No, you know I've never seen that. No, I've never seen I've never that. Never seen either. I never, never want to see it. Yeah, I've heard stuff about it. I, the I only know. good thing to come out of that is Boba Fett, and even Boba Fett's just like, eh. <laughs> uh, I mean, for Ooh, me, yeah. for me, my holiday movies for me, like, um, definitely growing up, you know, was Home Alone one and two. Those were my favorites. You know, I would crack up on those. Um, but another one that's that's my favorite and. It, you can watch it, you know, either around Halloween time or Christmas time is Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. Um, it's a real good movie, it, and it's got its own songs that are not Christmassy, but, you know, that, you know, they sing about, you know, different stuff. So it's a little, it's a little bit different. It's a little out of the, uh, of what you expect during the holiday season, I guess. So I guess it's, it's like the, the, the goth version. Of um, <laughs> another classic one I would always enjoy was the How to Christmas, well, Christmas Life Action with Jim Carrey. It's a very quotable movie nowadays. Oh, the um, Grinch. Yeah, not the Grinch. The one that just came out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, yeah, the, the, the live action. Live yeah, action. Okay. Just because it was a very practical movie, all around together. I don't know. I mean, I think I heard somewhere that Jim Carrey kind of didn't enjoy. Yeah, he enjoyed. Did not, he, he, he did not enjoy the whole it. movie just because of the whole. I can understand because the whole makeup aspect of him being in a. These, all green suit. I think it was like either 15 or 18 hours of uh, in, in the makeup chair just to get that thing on. That yeah. He I can like, imagine it, just how stressful that could be. Well, he apparently day, had, day apparently day he had like, a, like a <laughs> breakdown and mm-hmm. they had to bring in someone to, you know, who help him through it. And, you know, yeah, it, it, uh, you know, besides that though, it is a good, I like that movie. It's pretty funny. Um, you know, uh, I know that, I know that they just released this, uh, um, the Grinch. Illumination Studio. They actually released The Grinch, which starring Benedict Cumberbatch. So I heard it's okay. I mean, it's this year. It's a Grinch movie, so you're not getting anything new. It's a Grinch, but I heard it's okay. I I I want to take my take my son to see it because I know. But it's like it's a Grinch movie with like a updated cartoon version. Yeah. You know, it's not the 2D cartoon. It's the yeah. 3D cartoon. <clears throat> you know, which that that was what I got growing up before the Jim Carrey live action was the. Um, original How the Grinch Stole Christmas 2D that would come out like on uh, your local TV channels or whatever. I mean, I always look I always look forward to those. So you know that that was cool. Uh, yeah, so I mean that's definitely a good one. But um, another movie that I recently revisited uh, just because I want to see it and you know Will Ferrell is Elf. Elf. I've never I've heard <laughs> I, about that. Movie. I the beginning of it's good. I, I don't like the ending and it kind of like I was like. <coughs> Yeah, right there. Whoa, whoa, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, um, you, you just shocked him with that. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Uh, but yeah, like it's a, it's a funny I, movie. I've seen I've seen it a few times, but I haven't seen it in a long time. What 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 happens in the end? I forget. I know like 
Santa. He finally meets up with Santa and they fix the sleigh. It just gets silly like that. It's just like I mean, it's the movie itself is 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 silly. It's a silly movie. Well, it's I mean, funny. come on, think think about the uh, beginning of it where he's at in in the North Pole. I love when he's there in the North Pole because <laughs> he's there with the little jack in the boxes. Do, 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 do. Yeah, he gets up, <laughs> every single one he gets scared. And it's so funny, um, but yeah, like uh, you know, that once the movie goes on, he kind of was like, oh, hey, whatever, but. Yeah, I recently revisited that one again, and it was okay. I liked it, but the ending kind of, I just like okay. The one that um, one of my other favorite uh, holiday ones that I really like, and I'm trying to get um, my wife to watch it, but she's just like, I don't know. I'm just thinking I'm gonna fall asleep with it. Is uh, Polar Express? Uh, I love that movie. I, I when it first came out, I was like, I don't want to go see this. You know, it's kind of like, oh, whatever. I, I definitely don't sleep during that. <laughs> but uh, it, it was really good. It actually like got me. Like I, I, I got I got a little teary eyed. I mean, except see? for that, except for that part with all the mannequins or puppets hanging in that one cart. Yeah, that, was that one scared me. <laughs> I mean, now now I, I, I probably. Um, I mean, it's it's it, it. it's about this little boy who lost his uh, interest or his belief in Santa, and so the Polar Express is taking takes certain kids. To go visit Santa before he uh, takes off on Christmas Eve to uh, start, you know, delivering the gifts. And um, towards the end of it, when they finally see Santa, <clears throat> all the kids are excited. But he's like, like you know, you, you hear, you see the bells on on the uh, on the reindeers, and he he doesn't hear them. He's like, I can't hear them. Like what? You know, he doesn't hear them, and it's it's kind of sad because it's like all the other kids are excited. They're like, oh my God! Do you hear the bells? Do you see them? And then he's just like, I don't hear nothing. And then a bell rose, you know, falls off one of the reindeers and rose to him. And he's like, he's like, he doesn't see it. And then when he finally meets Santa, like up close in person, and he's like, oh my God, you're you are real. And then finally he hears the bell, and it's just like, I, I don't know that that did that got me. I was just like, oh my God, that was seems so sad. <laughs> that reminds me of uh, one of my favorite episodes of this particular show, South Park. I don't know if you've seen it or not. <laughs> no, I don't think I haven't seen that one. It's so, where uh, Kyle, there's like a new music going around, and then like kids love it, but then the parents are like, this sounds like crap. <laughs> and then it it just plays like poop, like farting sounds. Oh, when, and when, yeah, when, 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 it, when he hears it, he hears the same thing. Yeah, because he's, like, yeah. <laughs> he's getting older or something. Like. Yeah, and then even, even old, old, um, old classic songs, it still sounds like crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But that was a funny. I've never seen that. I'm gonna have to go check out that episode. <laughs> it's like, is it like a Christmas type thing, or is it no, just, no, it's just, it's just, a random, just like a random yeah, episode? Yeah, a random okay. episode. I, I mean, I think I think well, I think it's his birthday, or, or he he's getting older, or something. That he, and like, going and and you know talking about South Park, um, you know South Park has been around for such a long time, and when I first saw it, uh, I know mom and dad were like, "What the heck are you watching?" Especially, <laughs> especially the Mr. Hanky. Episode. Christmas poop. Like Christmas poop. It, uh, it's just so funny because like now I go back and watch that. It's just funny because he's a little poop, and he leaves little poop marks everywhere he goes. It's like it's even, gross. When he, even when he kisses Kyle, it's like a little little poop, little, mark. little like skin mark. It's nasty. It's, it's hilarious. I like that. Um, you know, but that's what I like about you know. There's uh, your serious um, Christmas movies. You know, like Miracle. On uh, 34th Street, um, Christmas Carol, you know, stuff like that. But then I also like some of these silly ones. You know, you got, uh, obviously, you know, Christmas Story is, is a little silly one. Um, you have uh, Elf, uh, the Home Alone movies. Only the first two, though. After yep. that, <laughs> it, it's doo-doo. <laughs> I wouldn't technically call it a Christmas movie, but it does have Christmas in it. Step Brothers. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And there is, like, like a... 20, 30 minute scene that revolves around Christmas, but still, it's still pretty. <laughs> pretty hilarious. Yeah. Um, again, it's got Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell, John C. Riley. John C. Riley. Uh, have, y'all, um, have y'all seen that movie? I think it's called The Santa Claus Chronicles, or the, what's it called? The, on Netflix with Kurt Russell? The Christmas <laughs> Chronicles, I think it's, it is. It's something that. Repeat I, Santa Claus. Yeah. yeah. I've, <clears throat> I've been hearing that, that it's, it's actually really good. good. And I think I heard something like that. I could be wrong, but I think I heard somewhere that that's Netflix's most expensive movie that they made. Like, it that, mm, has a highest, yeah, I, I the highest see, budget. I can see how that is. But I heard it's actually pretty good, and I was like, maybe I should check it out. But, I mean, at first I was like, yeah, no, no, it was actually pretty good. It was really good. We uh, we saw it, and we, we enjoyed it. It was, it was fun. Uh, I want to watch it again, because I didn't really catch the ending. 
uh, only because I, I got I started getting busy with the other stuff, so I didn't really finish it. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, other than that, it was pretty it was pretty interesting, real good. Um, kind of funny to see Kurt Russell um, portray Santa in a kind of a different way um, than what you know what you get out of Santa in other movies, especially like uh, the, the Tim Allen Santa Claus movies. Oh yeah. yeah. But uh, and you know those those were were kind of entertaining too. But looking back at those, uh, you know, I'm like, mm, like I don't know, just I guess like the way you feel about Elf, you know, yeah, a little bit. But you know, those those were some of, those are some of my favorite holiday movies. Um, I really do enjoy the holidays a little bit. I know as you get older, it's just kind of like just you know depending on your situation, you know whether you have kids or not, you know it gets expensive or you know. You kind of you kind of just lose interest and stuff. Well, the job I work at can't really say say the name of it, but I get a lot of people who come in. You know, it's a, it's a retail store, but I got a lot of people come in the store buying gifts, and they complain because like these kids want like this and that, and it's too expensive. I was like, well, we're living in a tech savvy world now, so people kids are gonna want PlayStation Fours, Nintendo Switches, Xboxes, yeah. new laptops iPads and all that good stuff, but so it's good. I mean, to to escape all this old, all this all this holiday madness, you know, watch 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 movies. There's a lot of good holiday movies out there. Um, I know, like after th- after Thanksgiving, that's what <clears throat> that's what um, me and my family does. Um, as far as you know, my wife and son is we watch, we set up our Christmas tree and we watch um, Christmas movies as opposed to going to the first Friday and. Uh, or not first Friday, Black Friday. <laughs> uh, it's just yeah, it's just kind of crazy. And then even at that, you don't, you don't, you're not necessarily even getting a good deal, in my opinion. I, I don't think. But I mean, even yeah. now, like you know, like these deals, you know, they're 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 throughout the holiday season. You know, it's just it's just more of a yeah. They have some deals in Black Friday, but I mean, I've never mm-hmm. ever participated in Black Friday. Cause well, I, just, I mean, it was like, a good deal on a Samsung TV, like sixty-five inch. It was five ninety-nine, the original price, thousand bucks. Was it that OLED one? Yeah. No, no. Samsung doesn't make OLED. They make QLED. <laughs> uh, oh, QLED. LG is OLED. Oh, okay. So, yeah. you know, but you know, like I said, we're we're here in the holiday season already. Um, but we're also kind of kind of kind of one of the reason, one reasons why I'm wearing that Deadpool is because you got dead, the PG thirteen. <laughs> have you uh, have you seen that, that 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 new little? Uh, it's a it's a little uh, maybe like twenty second thirty second. Uh, uh, trailer for for Deadpool two, yeah, that's where right. he's all asking what his questions, yeah, and he's all like, he goes, why PG thirteen? Uh, we could, uh, if, you know, for uh, it's, a, it's 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 family, it's family, it's for family. Oh, and Dis- and, and Disney and for Disney. Who do you live with? Classes. Where do you sleep? We spoon. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, why the mask? Ugly. He I goes, mean, why, why the jokes? Insecure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm a little curious to is if I want to go see it. They're gonna poke fun at the fact that it's Peter. And then they're gonna you know be like this is Peter team. You cannot do this. They're, they're and gonna say I, it I, I also like when he tells uh, Fred um, Fred Savage to, like he te- he actually tells him f you, but it like bleeps it out. Yeah, he, he has he, <laughs> look, he has a little a little buddy goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, uh, but yeah, that should be fun to see. I, I I I'm not sure when it comes out. Does it come out? I forget. December twelfth is when it's going to come out, okay. and it, it's only out for a limited time. It's not going to be out in theaters for like you know however long uh, yeah, mo- uh, movies release. come out. It's just a limited release, so I think it's for like just a week or two. I think they haven't until Christmas. I'm not too sure, but um, um, you know. but speaking of that coming out, we also have a few other movies that are going to be coming out that um, <clears throat> we want to discuss as well, because since this you know will be our last will be episode. our last episode for the year for the year. There's going to be uh. Like pretty like much three, two three good movies coming out. I mean, there's there's gonna be a few good movies coming out, but as far as what we want to see, um, one that I'm excited about that you know I want to see is uh, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. I've been hearing nothing but good that things. That one's about gonna that be movie. coming out pretty soon. That I'm really excited to go see that one. Um, Aqu- <clears throat> uh, Aquaman uh, was already released overseas in China, I believe. And uh, it made ninety four million dollars the opening weekend over there. That's a lot of money for that movie. To, you know, almost hitting a hundred million. So I'm, you know, obviously it's gonna be a big hit here. I've been hearing that it's it's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, they already greened it. Uh, they're already developing a sequel to it. So and uh, that's another one. Hopefully, you know, Christmas Day, go to the movies and you know, either see Spider Verse or Aquaman or see both. You know. Or 
Bumblebee. That's another movie that's coming out. I think the twenty first, and same with Aquaman. Yeah, it's coming out the same day as Aquaman. Here, been hearing nothing but good things about it. Yeah, and it, and it all revolves around the direction. It's not Michael Bay explosions, mindless action. No, it's actually a Michael Bay. Actually, a explosions. very Travis Knight is the director. Um, it's a very so. character driven story. A lot of people I, loved uh, the retro look of the Transformers. Oh yeah, going back to uh, what do you call it? Eighties, um, the eighties cartoon movie of it. Um, yeah, and then but even then, it, the the movie itself takes place in, in the eighties. So that that's that's real cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm real interested in seeing that one too. I know, um, I, know I know my son is because he likes Bumblebee. Minus John Cena. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm telling you, man. I know I know John Cena's coming out in it. He's playing the bad guy, supposedly, but. I guarantee you, either in the middle of it or towards the end of it, his character is gonna realize what's actually going on, and he's gonna like start helping like the Transformers, and then you know possibly even stay in with the franchise if they keep going in this direction of it. Well, uh, okay, there's another rumor that I, I I heard floating around that, and I know that he he's expressed that yeah, you know I'll, I'll be able to doing it. What do you guys think about John Cena taking over as Captain America? Uh, I'm sorry. Hell no. Yeah, I don't like it either. Hell no. I don't like it. No. Mm-mm. I mean, nothing to John Cena. He's a, he's a good actor. He's funny. You know, he was uh, he, he was he, he was funny in a uh, uh, train wreck with Amy Schumer. It's a great movie. You know, he's 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 he, he's, he, he's, he, he's 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 gaining his feet as far as you know. Like he's got some funny moments when he does little parts like that. <clears throat> but he, he was funny in uh, in uh, Daddy's Home too. Uh, that's that's actually another good uh, good Christmas one right there too. That was pretty silly. But uh, yeah, um, he had a he had you know came in like in the middle of the uh, the film um, when you know where they're arguing and stuff. So uh, Will Ferrell trying to get back at Mark Wahlberg brings in John Cena. Um, it, it's funny and it's silly, but. To say that he's a good actor, I, I don't know. Well, dude. I, he's 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 good enough. I mean, yeah, at first he started off he wasn't you know. But you know, to say that he's a good actor and to to consider him taking on the role of Captain well, no, America, yeah, no, no. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not no. saying that he, you know. No, I know what you're saying, but but think about my like, opinion. What, what, what think about like The Rock when he first started off was not good. Still not good. He's just funny. He's he's, he's, <laughs> he's better than what he was. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying as far as being the, a good the, actor. The like, Rock, the Rock is like the way Samuel Jackson was then. He's just like taking on everything. You know, you know <laughs> it's just like whatever it is, he's gonna be. He'll be in it. He'll do it. I will never forget um, Two Fairy though. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Two Fairy. I don't, I don't even. I'll, 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 I'll never forget uh, the thing. I forgot. The mummy, the second mummy, Brendan Fraser, when he the Scorpion King, the Scorpion King, with that well, awful CGI version of him. Ugh, it was. Ugh, it was well, you got the, the awful CGI of him and the Scorpion King, as well as the awful film, the Scorpion King. Yeah. <laughs> so. So, um, but um, going back to um, movies that are coming out, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are excited about it, I mean, but it's the movie that's supposed to be getting a lot, of, you know, a lot of buzz around it is Mary Poppins. Uh, I really, I kind of feel sorry for that movie a little bit, um, just because the movies that it's competing with. Um, Spider Verse is always gonna ha- is obviously gonna have a good weekend because it's coming out before the the other three. Then then you have Aquaman, Bumblebee, and Mary Poppins. No way, you know, it's gonna compete with that. I guarantee you the way. That weekend in in the Christmas week is um, for box office. It's going to be Aquaman. Either Ty or stuck in between. It's going to be Bumblebee and Spider Verse still. And then I think Mary Poppins is just going to come in last. I think I think Bumblebee's coming last. I honestly think that. I mean, I, Mary Poppins. I think you're not getting enough credit as far as uh, like I think it's going to make a lot of money. Uh, like we could be wrong, you know. Yeah, you can. I'm not saying it's right. going. I'm not going to say it's going to totally bomb. But it's gonna be in given the same, given the movies it, that it's coming out. It's with, gonna yeah. be in the same situation that Solo was when Solo came out in May with um, Infinity War and Deadpool two. Yeah. Um, well, just no competition at all. Yeah. Um, if anything, I I would suggest that Disney had released Mary Poppins either the first week or the second week, or even may even compete with the Spider Verse just so that it can, you know, make back what it what it put into it. Yeah. Um, I mean. I, I 
Not that I don't have no interest in seeing it, but I've never even seen the original, the original one. Uh, so that's one reason why I won't go see this this one. Yeah. So I mean, I just don't really know know the story of Mary Poppins, other than that she's just this magical babysitter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it kind of sucks. Uh, that dances that, with cartoon penguins. That we uh, we aren't. This is one of the first years that we aren't. We never. We are not getting a Star Wars movie this you know during this time of year usually december is star wars we got one earlier this year you know uh but it's kind of weird but you know next year we get episode nine and apparently we might be getting a trailer at christmas or at least some sort of a uh, footage you know or by, on christmas hopefully you know it's been rumored it's been filming all this throughout this year yeah and well, i know uh, i think it started in the summer actually yeah and then kevin smith recently uh visited the set and he he had nothing but great things to say saying that it was the biggest set that he's seen these the, the 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 scenes that he saw being filmed you know of course you know he's a he's he's a he's a big nerd uh it, they brought him to tears so you know i'm really excited about it uh you know, towards the end, you know, towards the end of the year, um, we actually got some uh, cool trailers this past week. Uh, we got uh, Captain Marvel, second trailer for that, which you know, you, you go to our Facebook page, also on our Twitter, um, you could find Mind Steven's reaction. Uh, Matthew was at work, so he he wasn't available, but uh, you can find our reaction to that trailer uh, on our Facebook or Twitter. I wish you would have seen my reaction to. Uh Avengers, though. Yes, and then, of course, uh, <clears throat> that's the Friday was we got Avengers, Avengers Endgame. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is with that, people were so upset, like, oh, you know, the Russo said that that wasn't the title. Like, I, okay. I, I, was, I was one of those people. I mean, not, not that I was upset, but I'm just kind of like, just, just, you know, don't tease us. Just say, like, you know, some, some may someone have gotten got right, right, or someone, you know, it, it's within the uh, Infinity War. But they were, they were really good at keeping things discreet yeah because they're like oh no that's not the title move on and what i like about this this uh trailer though even though it being a teaser it it kind of gave you a lot um, the thing is like we 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 know more or less not what's gonna happen but we know um the situation so so there's no there's this trailer has is no like setting up like we could we could we could literally not get any trailers for this movie and i'd still be excited to see it because we we've seen Infinity War and it's supposed to pick up, you know, directly after Infinity War. So, um, yeah, you know, this trailer just kind of showed us the aftermath of that. Um, that Tony Stark scene was 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 a great scene. Um, I just love that shot of of the ship in space. They just got cut to it. Like, I love that shot. It's 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 you know it's like wow. Like it's gonna be awesome. Um, God, and I was telling Stephen that it's pretty funny that yeah, this trailer is real somber and it's real. Um, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, ominous, you know, it's real, you know, dark and, you know, has a, yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, mean, dark and ominous. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you see uh, Captain America shedding tears. Yeah, you know, you, see them, you see them defeated. And the thing is, the two uh, glimpses of hope we get from this trailer and for the, you know, for, you know, for this movie are the two characters that we didn't see in Infinity War, which is Ant-Man and... Hawkeye Slash or Ronin. Ronin. So, well, and for those who don't know, <clears throat> yeah, um, Hawkeye is going to be portraying, um, I guess you could say, a different or newer character, uh, a character that's been in the comics before and um, um, that he portrayed as in um, in the aftermath of Civil War in the comic books. Um, it's uh, the character called Ronin. Which translates to uh, a masterless lone warrior, you know, samurai. So, I mean, which kind of makes sense. I mean, maybe he, you know, lost his family in the, in, in the decimation, which which that's what they're naming the snap. Um, maybe he lost his family, so that drove him to take on his persona and you know just to be out there again. Because the last time you heard, he was retired. You know, he's not coming back. Well, so. not that he was retired, but he was um, on house he, arrest. He 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 took a, a plea deal. Um, for for the sake of his family, yeah. So, um, and of course, so uh, did Scott Lang. So did Scott Lang, but we, but we saw um, we, got, we, we got we got to see Scott Lang and you know the Ant Man and the Wasp, which is a real good entertaining movie. I love that movie. Um, I know when Ant Man first came into the scene uh, with his own movie, everyone was like Ant Man, like what what the heck is this? Like 
is it like Spider-Man? And like, no, it's the guy who turns this, this small and, you know, he fights bad guys. Um, I, I still say, like, that's that was a real good entertaining movie. And then for him to, um, for them to follow up with the Ant-Man and the Wasp was also really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, we got to see Ant-Man before um, the Ant-Man and Wasp movie in uh, Civil War, uh, fighting alongside Captain America. Uh, so that, you know, it was good to see, you know, that kind of relationship with, you know, him, you know, relating with other, I guess like fighting with other superheroes, but also, it just like that he was fighting against other superheroes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, other than that, I mean, it was real good. Um, I'm real excited that he's going to be in this next one. I know you were telling me that uh, there were some people that were like, you know, how is he going to be in this one because of the way that uh, the, post-credit. the post-credits in the Ant-Man Wasp. Yeah, you know, which was short of Trapped in a Quantum, Quantum Realm and um, Hope, uh, Hope Van Dyne. Jane. Uh, that's her name, Jane? Yeah. Yeah, Janet. Janet, 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 Janet Van Dyne and, uh, and, and Hank Pym, you know, they were, they were snapped away. <laughs> so he was, last time we saw him, he was trapped and now we see him again. If you notice, he has this, the van with him when he's, uh, they show the footage of him outside. Mm-hmm. He has a van, so he has that, that, that portal with him. So, so probably should have said this at the beginning of it, but little spoilers. If you haven't seen Ant-Man and the Wasp, there's a post credit scene where um, they have a miniature version of what they're doing in the whole movie. Um, going into the quantum realm and um, in the uh, new Avengers Endgame trailer they show Ant-Man with that van Um, I mean you really gotta listen to it and if you you know you're like fans like like us that we you know we try to take in every little bit of detail and every bit of dialogue you know uh, you hear Janet say something about um, what is it Uh, time court Texas time court Texas so uh, that, cause that's one of the things that's been going around about the fourth Avengers movie is that th- there may be possible time travel going and, on. And not only that, I mean, like you know, spoilers for the movie. Um, set photos that have been set leaked photos. show uh, show the Battle of New York. Uh, Ant Man with Ant Man with them. So you know, there is time travel. Uh, there's been, and that's the thing I hate. You know, it's just, I mean, yeah, we get these leaked photos, and you know, but what are you gonna do? And then there's gonna be a big old time jump. Yeah. Within the movie, sometime during the movie, the it's supposed to be like a five-year time jump or something like that. <clears throat> Which, no, it's I'm, all I'm, it's all preparation for trying to get them back, and it sucks that they have to go through go through five years of not having their friends. Yeah, but that may also play with the time travel. They may time travel five years and see where that leads. But I don't know. We don't know. Yeah. So I'm. I mean, obviously, super excited for this movie. Oh, and I just read uh, the other day that they changed the date. Oh yeah, uh, it's because uh, in the in the trailer it shows April twenty nineteen. Yeah, so now it's Not, April. I mean, it's April. It it was originally uh, slated to come out May third of twenty nineteen. The trailer drops at the end. It says April. Everybody's like April. It's uh, being released April twenty sixth, which is uh, about a year. Uh, you know, a year to the date that Infinity War. Infinity War came out the twenty seventh of April, so it's it's right there. You know, so it's a year. Uh, after but the one that, the article I read said that they changed it back to May, that they're thinking of putting it the first weekend of May. Well, the thing is, it's I don't know. I mean, so uh, I, I don't know. I, 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 I hope not because when it comes out, when it comes out, I mean, regardless, I'm there. I'm excited for it. Yeah, definitely excited for Captain Marvel. I can't wait to see how that's gonna tie in to Avengers Four because she's supposed to make her. Um, MCU, I mean, the MCU appearance is going to be her in her own movie, but her big MCU appearance is going to be with the with the rest of the heroes. Yeah, I think as uh, Captain Marvel comes out in March, so we're gonna get a uh, two more movies, you know, two Marvel movies real close to each other. So you better go see that Captain Marvel movie before Endgame comes out, because you know you don't want you don't want to catch up. And if you're one too, because I know there's still some people out there that you know still haven't even gotten fully into the whole MCU universe. If you're one of those people, I suggest if you have a friend or family member that has all the movies, start watching them now. Um, you can either watch them in the, in the orders that they've been released in, you know, from the first Iron Man in 2008, you know, continuing from there. Or, um, you know, some comic book sites have, you know, a timeline that you that you could watch the movies in where, um, because in, the, in phase one, Captain America, the first Avenger was the very last one to come out. Um, not the very last one, but second to last before 
Avengers. The Avengers movie came out. Um, but you can actually watch that one first ahead of Iron Man. So there's just like a like a timeline thing that you can watch it in <coughs> as well because um, <coughs> there there is you know certain timelines that that certain situations take place in the MCU. You know, but regardless, I suggest you watch them. They are really good, really entertaining, and you'll fall in love with them. I, yeah. I, I'm, you know, whether you're not a comic book fan at, uh, at all or whatever, but you'll fall in love with them. Um, don't feel like you have to know what's going on in the comics, because uh, what's good about the MCU is that you know, yeah, they take some stuff out of the comics, but they create their own their own stories for for people, you know, to just watch. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's 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 just my opinion on it. So yeah, I mean, um, can't wait for that movie. Can't wait for Captain Marvel. Um, but we are at the end of this year, and um, it's been a good year for movies. Good, good, good year for TV, and uh, even better year for music, in my opinion. Um, we want to uh, end this episode with just uh, a little recap, and uh, you know, our favorite music, our favorite you know TV shows, and our favorite movies that we've seen that can't have come out released this year. So, um, I'm going to start off, and I'm going to start off with the music. Um, I, there are a lot of great albums, um, a lot of great bands, but two that stand out to me, and it's because I've been listening to these albums on repeat ever since they came out, uh, was a, a band called Can't Swim. Uh, they've had a, a, an amazing album that just came out, but the one that I'm re- I was really excited for was uh, Dance, Gavin Dance's album that came out. Uh, on Spotify, they, they give you like oh your your top songs of 2018. They give you a little uh, like a rundown of what you listen to and mm-hmm. everything else. My uh, my top I think four songs that I, I, I listened to the most this year are all dance cam dance songs from that album. Uh, it said I listened, it said I listened to 44 hours of dance cam and dance. <laughs> <laughs> so wow, that that speaks you know to how much that I love that album. It's a great album. I was how so, much so, you love that band too. I was so <laughs> glad that I saw them this year, um, but. Yeah, Can Swim and Dance, Gavin Dance, um, and uh, and then a um, honorable mention was Turnstile's album. That one, uh, they called Time and Space, I believe so. That one was really good. So um, you know, what, 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 you know, what stands out this year in music to y'all? Um, for me, <laughs> for me, uh, other than that, <laughs> is um, it's, there's a few. Um, two two that are in the same genre, I guess you can say, and one that's different. Thanks for sporting. <laughs> uh, 21 Pilots is one of them, yes. Um, which, by the way, we are going to go watch. So, shh, don't tell my son. I hope he doesn't, he doesn't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we are going to go see them next year when they come into San Antonio. Uh, but, yes, uh, 21 Pilots, uh, Trenches, that was a real, real good album. Uh, a little bit different than you know their last two, but still, still Twenty One Pilots. Um, one of my favorite songs from that album is uh, "My Blood." Love that song, and another one that's on that album is called "Morph." Those are like my by far my two favorite songs from that album, um, <clears throat> which I hope when we go watch them they play live. That I would love to see those two songs play play live. Um, obviously, for my son, who's also a big fan of Twenty One Pilots. Um, loves uh jumpsuit and uh nico and the niners uh he likes the, the album as well but he i mean he, he really loves a lot of their songs too so uh that's one of them the other one for me is um was the trey use new album mm-hmm. um i really like that album I, uh, it's it's just pure rock i i love it classic um, i wouldn't really say classic trey because they got a couple of songs on there that are kind of like different but you know, other than that, it's just it's just straight up just a rock album. I love it. It's hard. Uh, it's not as as heavy as uh, some of their other albums, but it, it's it still rocks pretty good. And then I guess as an honorable mention, because uh, we haven't even gotten an album from them yet, is um, As I Lay Dying. Oh. Uh, they released a single my own this year, My Own Grave. That uh, that one single has been getting a lot of buzz. Um, especially that it's the original lineup, uh, original singer, and um, well, what's his name, uh, Tim? Yeah. Um, so yeah, because for me those those are uh, the two albums and single for me um, for those bands. <clears throat> Matt. Uh, well, for me, one of my favorite 
couple of few favorite albums that I like this year is from um, you know, Mac Miller, of course. He came out with Swimming, one of my top favorite Rest albums. Rest in peace. Rest in peace to him. But he dropped one of, to, to me, one of the best albums that one he ever made, and two of the year. Um, fortunately, you know, I guess then, you know, like a month later after he dropped it, he did pass away. He was supposed to go on tour to um, promote the album, but I was supposed to go see him. I mean, fortunately, thank God, I mean, not thank God, but I didn't get my ticket in time, to, um, in time to that happen, so. And, I mean, aside from that, I mean, it was a good uh, type of R&B, hip-hop album. Another one I liked from uh, Akalan Trio. Um, they released their album sometime within between like the fall, fall like august like august like kind of yeah late august um that one was one for me and i was having it on heavy rotation when they first came out uh, especially their singles because when their singles came out there's three singles i had them on heavy rotation uh, played them constantly all the time in the car um or in my house or in my home so those, those really kind of piqued my interest this year, and I don't necessarily say I have an honorable, honorable mention, but if I do have an honorable mention, it'll be um, Store So Far, his new album, yeah. uh, Proper Dose, which is a pretty solid album from them. It's kind of a little different tone than what I was used to when I started listening to them back in like 2013. Um, it took a little bit more melody in some of their songs, and not like a not like that heavy pop punk sound that they that they brought with the last three that they released prior to this one. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, those pretty much three solid good albums this year. And you know, aside from like music, TV shows, I will talk TV shows and movies. So I'll start first off with that. Uh, let me just give my TV shows. See, I don't really watch regular regular cable TV anymore. Well, and it, it doesn't even necessarily even Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So, like, I was, because I watched there's, mostly what's, yeah, there's, on, there's what's beyond, on Netflix. There's what's beyond, on Netflix or Hulu. Yeah, beyond that. <laughs> um, you know, um, just, you know, just stuff that doesn't even come on the big screen, stuff yeah. that, that we watch on the, on the small screen, so. It could be, you know, anything. So, my favorite, how I recently just finished, was The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. It <laughs> was... <laughs> You know, at first I didn't really give it a, give it a chance when it first released, but then I was like, you know what? Like a week ago, like a week or two later, I was like, you know what? Let me stop procrastinating and watch this. See what what's the buzz was about? Because I haven't really heard nothing about it, honestly. But it was which is kind of weird. Yeah, it was a different. Because if, if you've seen the show, the way it, it plays out, I'm surprised yes. there wasn't a lot of backlash on it. But well, yeah, there, there actually, sorry, there kind of actually was. The Church of Satan actually <laughs> sued. The yeah, but, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm aside talking, from that, I'm talking about aside from that other like <laughs> but, yeah, other than the church of Satan because some <laughs> some statue that they use in the in the show in one of the show, but aside from that controversy, that that show only had it was pretty new, fresh take on the character, especially and the, that spe universe, especially from uh, us from um, especially if you grew up with the sitcom. Yeah, the sitcom which was. <laughs> Nothing like the way that yeah. this show is, but but yeah. yeah. I mean, aside from that, what other shows that I watched this year? Of course, the how the the haunting yes. of uh, Hill House. That was oh, that was a good standout show that was on Netflix, and I'm pretty sure that's when you watch all of our Definitely. favorite favorite shows. That, that's that's to be, that one. has to be my favorite uh, TV of 2018, Haunting Hill House. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, um, was there anything else? That you... I can't. I'll, I was so stuck in the loop. I know I'm gonna take. I'll probably take one away from him, but um, one of my favorites uh, again. That's not um, regular cable or your local channels. Uh, again, it's on Netflix. Uh, for me, for number one, well, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back. Um, I'm currently watching that that, that just came out. Uh, I love this this show. It's an it's an animated adult cartoon show. Is uh, F is for family. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you're um, always talking about that. That show is freaking hilarious. I'm a I'm a huge fan of uh, Bill Burr. Um, I think he's just funny. This is kind of like uh, based off of you know him growing up, you know, back in the '70s with his family and his uh, his dad. You know, being like this old school, uh, you know, man has to provide for the family kind of thing. Um, it's funny. It's got some real good um, 
some real good uh, voices in there. Uh, as far as you got Bill Burr, who plays his dad. Um, God, I can't remember her name, but the uh, actress that came out on um, the original Jurassic Park. Oh, uh, Laura Dern? Yeah, Laura Dern. And then uh, it, in some episodes, you got uh, Sam Rockwell that comes out on it too. So it's a good show, very hilarious for, for an adult TV show. Especially if you're a fan of like Family Guy, um, American Dad, Futurama, stuff like that. Um, with it being on Netflix, it, 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 it's a little bit more raunchier um, than, than some and of those. What, then what but, you're going to see on cable TV. Yeah, then what you see on cable TV, but still pretty funny. Uh, my second one was uh, The Chilling Tales of uh, Sabrina, because it was just a different, whole different story on, on the character itself, Sabrina, uh, from the sitcom Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, just the way the, the whole thing was shot, the uh, the storytelling of it, and just kind of um, some of the stuff they say, you know, praise Satan, and it's like, oh shit, <laughs> excuse my language. But my favorite one for this year, season three, Daredevil. Daredevil. Yeah. That was such an amazing season. Um, Netflix announced that they, they canceled the show. Um, which we were all kind of expecting, because uh, of what's going on with you know Marvel Studios, right. uh, Netflix, everything. Um, you know, besides all that jargon, uh, and then you know Iron Fist and Luke Cage being the first two to to um, to go to go. Uh, this was kind of expecting. It's it's pretty much expected with the next two uh, Jessica yeah. Jones and the yeah. Punisher, only because it was it's going to be more affordable for them to. Finish production on those shows, air them, and then get them out of the way, as opposed to just stopping stopping it, it mm-hmm. mid production, and then they're gonna have to pay all this other stuff and fees and stuff like that. But yeah. regardless, I love this show this season because the way it ended, it ended on a good high note. It ended with the opportunity of that it could continue on, as well as um you left you left satisfied mm-hmm. um it was so good i mean season two was, was amazing too because it introduced us to uh the punisher and gave us electra uh but this one you know was was matt murdoch trying to refine himself uh going back to his black suit ditching the the actual daredevil suit itself uh pretty much is becoming the uh um, I don't know, it was just it was just amazing. It was good. I loved it. Uh, I have I have really have nothing bad to say about Daredevil. I mean, there was really nothing. I mean, I know some fans can can argue with that and they can say what they were unhappy with, but for me, I was I was happy with it. I was satisfied with it. I I loved the the uh, the villains that they brought out. And, you know, with the return of um, Kingpin and introducing uh, Bullseye. It was just really good, amazing. Um, yeah, that is. Yeah. <laughs> that as far as TV shows, that's that's what it is for me. Um, well, obviously, you know, Matt took my number one, which was Haunting of Hill House. And the reason that's my number one is because, um, you know, it came out, and you know, like we said in our past episode, one, one of our past episodes, that I was like, I was like, Hill House, Haunting of Hill House. It sounded like the Haunting um, on. Haunted Hill. Yeah, Haunted Hill or uh, the House Haunted Hill. Yeah, and I was like, is that like a different version of that? No, completely different. Okay, you know, I saw the trailer today. It was okay. You know, it's like whatever. Um, but when I saw the buzz around it online, let me check it out. And I was glued <laughs> to it, and I was so so um, uh, you know, it just just fascinated with this show. Uh, not only with the show itself, but the production around it, and you know, I. I uh, I really, really, really enjoyed that show. Uh, another one was obviously Daredevil season three, um, and uh, I know this show didn't come out, and this is kind of really out of left, out of left field. You're probably gonna laugh at me for it, but a show, it, and I'm not sure if it came out this year. Uh, it was uh, it was a show that was on USA, and uh, but when mm-hmm. I when I heard about it, I saw it. I was all like, okay, you know, we watched it, and then after that, I was glued to that show as well, which is um, The Sinner uh, with Jessica Biel. And um, that was a good show. It was surprisingly I good. I say that show came out last year. I, I think it came out in 2017, <coughs> but it was on but Netflix this year. 
but they did a second season this year, yeah. which the second season was good and did bring back um um oh what's his name the the detective that was in it yeah yeah I, I, yeah um, I forget his name actor awesome. but, but um, it, it brought him back um the second season was was just almost just as good yeah as the so first season. I, yeah so that, that's, that's actually really good I forgot about that one I thoroughly enjoyed that show as well uh, and another show that I started watching which it just recently I think well maybe not recently but it's, it, it it's I think it's a spinoff from another show I just started watching it. I'm about three four episodes in it's a really good show starring Diego Luna and Michael Pena not goes Mexico. Uh, it's good. It's really good. And yeah, yeah, you, you have to, you have to, you know, be patient because a lot of it's in Spanish. It has subtitles, obviously, but I mean, it's a good show. Like uh, the second episode, once that in, I was like, oh, the first like, season was amazing. I love the first season. Anime prepared me to read subtitles. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, uh, check out you know Narcos Mexico. It's on Netflix. Check it out. It's it's, it's awesome. If you want to no. go, if you want to go a little family friendly, and it's also on on uh, local channels, or you know that you can pick up on local channels like uh, ABC. Um, it's the uh, it's the uh, network that has it. Um, my wife and I have been getting into um, the one with Jenna Fisher from The Office is uh, splitting up together. Oh yeah, that's it's it's it's. it's it's a little different, it's a little awkward, but it's it's funny, it's entertaining. Um, another one that we were that we just started watching that came out this year um, that has uh, Michael Cutlitz who played Abraham in The Walking Dead mm-hmm. is uh, the kids the kids are alright. Um, takes takes uh, place in the uh, 70s. It's real good. It's funny. Uh, it's about a, a family, a married couple that have eight boys. <laughs> Uh, and all the testosterone that goes on in it, and you know, raising these kids and raising them in, in this time era. But it, it's 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 pretty hilarious. It's funny. Uh, those are two that um, my wife and I have been getting into. Um, I want to say splitting up together actually came out last year as well because this, the season that we're watching this year is uh, season two. Okay. So, but the, but season one definitely for the kids are right with Michael Cutlitz. Uh, it's a real good show. Yeah, it's real funny. So, it's also on Hulu, so. If you don't have your local channels, you can watch it on Hulu. I'm not sure if they have any of the re- the uh, later episodes because I know Hulu kind of uh, has some that that expire after a certain time. But if uh, if they are on there, I suggest you take check uh, check them out. It's real good. Another good that I got to mention was um, I haven't finished it yet, but what I saw was pretty solid. Was Attack on Titan season three on Hulu? If you haven't watched Attack on Titan. I had the anime. <laughs> it's an anime, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. and it's a solid, very violent <laughs> anime, but it's a solid anime with good story, good character development. You may not see it right away because it is kind of wacky. Silly. Silly. <laughs> a little like bit. In the first season, when I first saw it, I was like, all right, everyone's just kind of, a uh, spoiler alert, dying in yeah. like five seconds. But, um,. Other than that, aside from that, once, once he passed all the these giant, the naked, giant killing naked humans, <laughs> yeah, these giants yeah, killing all these people. Things. It's a very solid, well grounded show or anime. Oh, and then I'm sorry. Go ahead. You finish. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, not to uh, also, I didn't mean to interrupt you right there too. But um, before I lose my train of thought. Another one that's coming out this year that we're getting um, in about three days or so. It's coming out this week um, on Hulu. It's a Hulu original. It's Marvel's Runaways. Um, Should be coming that, out the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. I thought it was coming 25th. out the twelfth. Twelfth. Oh, could be the twelfth too. I don't know. I thought it was coming out the twelfth. Is that hasn't come out yet? No, not, like, the, not the second season. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That was uh, like, it's, see, it's, it's, it's season two. The first season was really good. Obviously, it, it starts off a little slow because it's introducing you to the characters, uh, getting to the. To the plot of what's going on, and it's, a, it's involves around teens. So, yeah, you know, it's gonna be a teen drama. You yeah. know, obviously, teen drama with the mix of um, superheroes. superheroes and you know it being Marvel. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, another one that was I don't know did it come out this year or was it last year? What? Uh, I think it was this year. Cloak and Dagger. That was, that was this year. year. This yeah. year that that I finally saw all the episodes to that one. That one is another amazing one. So if you're a fan of either Cloak and Dagger or Runaways that, and you haven't seen one or the other, mm-hmm. I suggest you watch those shows. They're really good. Um, 
I know for sure that Cloak and Dagger do take place in the timeline of the MCU somewhat a little bit because they, they kind of mention some stuff uh, in the MCU. Not characters, but some just some events. Uh, I'm not too sure about Marvel's Runaways. I've only seen the first season once, but it was still really good. I'm going to go back and watch it again to prep myself for season two. That should either be coming out, I believe it's 12, but it may be the 27th. Either way, it's supposed to come out this month on Hulu. So if you have a Hulu account, I suggest you go check that out. It's so, uh, really good. That one that J.J. Abrams did. Oh, yeah. Uh, Castle Rock. Castle Rock. Yeah, that, Castle that, Rock, oh, yeah. That was a good one. That's a good show, yeah. I'm just printing that up because y'all know y'all seen it. I haven't. Yeah, I, I haven't, haven't finished it, it but I started it. I, we finished it. It's, it's, it's really, really good. good. If you if you are a fan of uh, The Haunted on Hill House, I suggest you watch that show. Yeah. It's really good. Um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Skirskard that plays uh, Pennywise. Bill Chris Cars- Bill, Bill Skarsgård. Bill Skarsgård. Yeah, Bill Skarsgård. Which related to... Um, uh-huh. Alexander's question. Yeah. <laughs> Just I'm going to say his name from his character's name. And then they're all, and their father being... Um, God, what's his name? Uh, the father comes out on, um, on the Thor movies. He's the... Uh, Scientist. Yeah. Yeah. They're all Scarlet. Yeah, they're all Scarlet. But anyways, uh, that that is such a good show, real good show. Yes, that um, if you haven't seen it, you should watch it and you should finish it. Yeah. Uh, well, I got one that because you mentioned teen drama, kind of you know, kind of like that teen teenage drama. Um, and that first season of the show, I saw it and I was like, this is some heavy stuff. Uh, it was a good show, really moving. Uh, the second season came out this year. It had 13 Reasons Why, season two. Mm. It's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good show. I mean, mm. it's 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 like I said, a teen drama it deals with some some very some heavy, 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 heavy stuff. stuff. That that uh, both seasons both mm. got real controversy. Yeah. Um, stuff about it, but oh my god, it's, it's, it's such a, an amazing show. It it hits hard on a lot of things, a lot of issues. Yeah. That certain people, you know, <clears> as grown ups, don't see what you know your teenagers struggle with you know it's um one thing i always find and i'm kind of glad i'm 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 grown up to be the person that i've grown up to be is like i didn't i didn't like just let my childhood go away you know i i still love star wars i still love the comic books still get excited with the movies but you know i see some of my friends that that act like like the way our parents acted, you know, when we would get excited about cartoons when we were kids, and they're just like, "Oh yeah, uh, what, what's that one movie? The uh, was it the Marvels uh, Batman?" It's like, dude, no, Batman's DC. <laughs> like, come on, come on, guys. Like Marvels Batman. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like they yeah. kind of like get all they get all the superhero stuff mixed and to up. And us, are just know? like, <gasps> yeah, we're like, dare oh, you? Why would you? Why would you say that? You know, and just kind of like how um, I was, you know, mentioning before how um, the Star Wars. Um, <laughs> franchise has come off with with two spin-off movies um rogue one and solo where when rogue one first came out people were confused because that they saw darth vader they're like well, why is darth vader here i thought he was dead and then what what and then why they're did like they, why did they recast ray yeah yeah what where's where's kylo ren and it's like okay guys this is not part of the skywalker saga <laughs> this is a whole different story on its own it's you know Timeline saga for Skywalker, and then, and it goes down from here. There's a another thing that happened. Yeah, See, but with totally different characters. That's why I like those movies. I mean, I love Rogue One, but I have a bittersweet feeling of a uh, Solo. Just yeah. cause, I mean, we'll get to that later. Yeah, that, that'll be part of the movie. Wait, no, part of this. let's uh, let, let let's go to that. You know? Well, hold on. Um, there was actually one more show I wanted to say. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, there's uh, a lot of TV. I can't can't remember mine. Go ahead and do yours. I haven't watched it yet, but ah. it was pretty good. Um, I heard a lot of good things about it, and it is the final season of this show, unfortunately. But I loved the first two seasons. Was Ash versus Evil Dead. Uh, the last season, the last and five, no. Well, that's what last me. What did it get canceled? It got yeah. Well, after, I, I after think after season three, they kind of decide. You know what? This is where we're gonna stop it because I kind of hear that. It, it I think it's because the, the, well, I, I hear that the, the actor um, Scott Tires. Bruce Campbell mm-hmm. um, just kind of like got yeah. tired of, t- tired of playing the character and just, or kind of wanted to retire the character. I mean, because himself, he's been the character since 
Evil, Evil Dead, Dead in like 19... Army of Darkness. Mm-hmm. When did the first Evil Dead come out? 19, like... 70, 70, 78, 78? 78? I want to say 78. Yeah. Late 70s for sure. When I first saw the movie, I was like, man, this is weird. <laughs> it's, it's a weird movie. It's very gory, very weird to follow. Because if you see like two, it doesn't really continue off from one. And I, and I found that out because it's because of, of uh, rights. Yeah. Time Raimi didn't really get the rights from Miramax. So he kind of had to make his own. It's like kind of had to recreate the his own movie and then that's how we got army of, army of darkness and then years later we got the remake of evil dead which kind of which that itself was weird which took place in the <laughs> same universe because it was all to the end you see bruce bruce camel just look at the camera and say groovy <laughs> <laughs> and, then, I didn't watch that and then like a few years after that they came out with ash versus evil dead which was pretty good and the second second season just amped up the the hype the hype the gore and then season three which i heard has the biggest dead eye ever ever created and that now it's cool but yeah. is that on any any of the uh, uh it should be on, on uh, so it should be on netflix that's okay. why I, I started watching I thought, it. I thought it was on um oh it's on stars, stars originally yeah, but stars. it's on netflix but okay. if, you, if we do have a stars account or you have stars or cable you can download the stars app and obviously watch it from there but yeah it's not on netflix yet the season the last season so what was your last one? Um, my last one, uh, I haven't even finished watching it. Nah. I, don't, I don't even know if they've even finished the season yet. I don't know. You've been keeping up with it. Um, Titans. Oh. Titans came out this year. And surprisingly, on, it's been kind of... On uh, DC's um, I've only watched app. the first episode. I've watched the first three. I think three. I've only seen the first two. The first three. Uh, I've seen the first three. and But I really haven't heard anything about it. It's been getting good buzz. Really? Yeah, it's, mm. it has. I don't know. <laughs> the first two seasons were a little rough for me to watch, but um, yeah, when it, Jason it, Todd got. I hear it gets <sighs> better. No spoilers, bro. No spoilers. Bro. I hear it gets it was, better. You, know, it's, 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 you see, you see. Yeah, I haven't watched for the trailers. So <laughs> Jason Todd appears in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's cool. So yeah, I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of great TV, um, but Not to um, to kind of start getting ready to close out the show here, uh, this episode. Um, our best movies of the year and 2018 2018 and of course i mean we all loved infinity war we all loved deadpool um so for the sake of this list we're not going to include those two movies you know because it's a given we love those movies we know you love we know, we know you love those movies so uh aside from that we're going to be giving um our three top movies of this year plus our most disappointing so i'll start off um my most disappointing movie <laughs> Halloween. Oh, I did not like that movie. Halloween kind of, I mean, it was okay, but it disappointed me. Um, Y'all know my thoughts about that. Check out our episode. It was Halloween H40. But, um, so to, uh. to go back on, on a good note, my uh, my third favorite movie of the year, um, it's actually a documentary, and it was a Mr. Rogers documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor. Um, that, out, that movie, is, <clears throat> yeah, that documentary is so good. And, and me being a, a, a child that didn't watch uh, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood growing up, you know, so I really have no connection to that show. Just watching that documentary and getting an insight on, on, on the man's life and uh, the ending just brings you to tears. It's a great documentary. I recommend you all check it out. Won't you be my neighbor? My my, my number three. So you're... Uh, I'm not going okay. on this one. Number what, three? What, what's, what's, what's your... your uh, what was your least... Or, yeah, your most disappointed or not so favorite... I know this guy's gonna hate me for it, <laughs> but my not so favorite movie was Venom. I mean, I enjoyed it. And granted, it made a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, it made a lot of money, but come on, <laughs> it come was on. <laughs> it was very straightforward movie to me. The action was pretty cool, but other than that, it was just like, all right, we got a Venom movie, cool. You expected more. I expected it? a little bit more. Um, I mean, Tom Hardy did great, but around like the character, what the stuff that the character said during some scenes was a little bit cringy. <laughs> and I was just like, I mean, there's a lot of funny stuff that he mentioned. I, one I can't really mention because I don't know if anything. It's fine. You can spoil it. I, I already know. She I mean, no there, spoilers. Spoilers. For those who haven't seen it. There was a part where Venom's kind of discussing Riot, and he's like, this guy's going to have to 
to kind of shit that you never believe. <laughs> and then the way he talks. And then when Darren, Darren the uh, <laughs> and then Darren like their fight between Finn and Riot, Riot does some crazy shit, and then you see Sir Tommy like, oh my god, and it's like I told you. It's like <laughs> the thing but, about it is kind of like a mix of um, Sylvester Stallone talking as Rocky with the. Uh, <laughs> But in a venom voice. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that was probably like my favorite part. It's like, okay, that's funny. But other <laughs> than that, I mean, what's your third best movie? Best movie for the year. A third best movie of the year? I would have to say, Solo. I mean, it did get a lot of hate, and it didn't do well in the box office. And that was anyway. that's due to the part because I know fans didn't really want a solo movie. Yeah. But. To me, I was like, all right, this is cool. This is a little bit different than what we get, even what we got from Rogue One. Um, I can I can enjoy this. And then that surprise at the end with Darth Maul, I'll spoil, another spoiler alert if you haven't seen it already. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, it was a pretty fun Star Wars movie to me. I can get why people didn't really enjoy it if they watched it and why people just decided to skip it all together. But other than those flaws, it didn't really downplay the movie it still was still what it was still explaining how solo became solo and how he got this you know the, uh, uh, I can't pronounce I can pronounce it the name but um a Falcon oh, yeah, the I mean, Falcon yeah. and how his relationship started between him and Chewie and him and Lando, Lando. Yeah. and we also got introduced new characters from um Woody Harrison to um Kira, um, Kira's name? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Clark? Or? <coughs> uh, em- Emily Clark. Em- Emily Clark. Emily Clark. Who, who uh, plays... Em- uh, Amelia Clark. Amelia Clark. Amelia Clark. <laughs> Clark. <laughs> Say the potato. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know her most from uh, Game of Thrones. She's so She's beautiful. the Queen of Dragons. Uh, Queen of Dragons, yes. To everything. But anyways... Um, and you? What was uh, your most disappointing movie of the year? See, that is, it's hard with me. Because um, I know... When we've talked in other episodes, you guys have mentioned, you know, how y'all felt about certain movies, and I always either either keep high hopes or uh, my anticipation not so high because I, there could always be a backlash on stuff. Um, I, I don't know because I know I know how you feel about Venom. I know how you felt about Jurassic World, the, the uh, Fallen Kingdom. What? Halloween. Halloween. No, but um, I know we've talked about Jurassic World and you were kind of like, oh, that uh, looks kind of... Yeah, well, I haven't seen it, but I heard it. Just... But, but when, I mean, when, it when the trailers a, came out. Yeah, it was okay, a okay, bad okay, movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was the ending. Which I was guess hard. I could say maybe Jurassic World was my least favorite yeah, I could of agree the year. with him on that. Cause I, I liked it, but how it ended was just like so... And and because of the, the one of the stories on it... Um, the what what drove them to start cloning was because of a uh, of a uh, of a uh, one of the because uh, it, it was John Han um, John what was his name the uh, the the older guy from the first movie John um, Hammond John, John Hammond, Hammond who was partners with another gentleman who's uh, who has the same cane for some reason whose <laughs> daughter passed away and he cloned her, and he cloned her. Oh, God. That's why he would never, if you've seen the movie, that's why yeah. he would never show pictures of her mother and stuff like that. Which the mother, the clone thought, the clone had a babysitter or a nanny. You lost me. Which was the mother all, all along, pretty you, much. You lost me at John Ham. <laughs> John Ham. John Hamm. Uh, anyways, I guess that's, that one can be my least favorite just because the story itself was kind of dumb and weird. But what I do like about Jurassic World, uh, Lost King, uh, Fallen Kingdom is, um, it was it was entertaining. Um, it it shared it shared the story. It it also kind of for me shared the story of uh, the original three, uh, the Lost World, and uh, and and um, Jurassic Park three. Only because they kind of did the same thing that they did in Lost World. They, Tried bringing the dinosaurs to the mainland. To the mainland, and 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 and, and, and like in Jurassic World three two, they they created an, another super dinosaur, which they did in, in Fallen Kingdom. Spoilers. I mean, what? But, Jurassic World. <laughs> no, uh, Jurassic 
part three did. You know, it's the, the spine, the spinal one. The, supposedly, uh, what was 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 a lab created dinosaur. What? It, it, it was it. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be a. Uh, it wasn't a real dinosaur. Hmm. So, but anyways, anyways, yeah. But anyways, I, I guess that that could be my most disappointing one. Okay. Or not so favorite. Okay. Just so it's okay to say you didn't like it, but um, best because. Uh, my best the three the, the, the three yeah. hmm i'm gonna have to tie with with uh, matthew on solo solo um i like solo i loved it i like solo it was entertaining it was different i know people didn't want it i know they they preferred to have a boba fett spin-off instead yeah. well, spoiler alert it's got canceled <laughs> yeah thank yeah. god but i think it would have done a lot worse and for me the only reason why Solo didn't do good is because, again, the release date. We got it so quick. Boom. Like, and I, the time I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure Dance. how, how the, uh, the timeline was between the trailer and the movie, but it felt like, it was like one week, the week before the movie came out, it felt like you got the trailer just that, one, that week before. It came out in May or a came out like three in February. Three months, like three months before it released. But which uh, was yeah. a little but what I'm saying though is that's the way it felt like yeah. we just got the trailer and then boom you got the movie yeah again I think Solo would have done a lot good if it would have had its own month somewhere or even if they would have released it November this year because it would have definitely lost against again Spider-Verse Aquaman oh, yeah. Bumblebee coming out this month yeah me saying that is because it was in competition against Deadpool 2 and Avengers, Avengers Infinity War, which we all knew those two were going to get so much more hype than the solo film mm -hmm. because solo film being a um, spinoff and not a direct sequel or anything to the, to the original saga um, that everyone's used to. But again, I'm going to say solo is my third favorite for this year because... It was real entertaining. Um, actually, I have two third favorites. If you don't mind. Okay. Uh, Solo and Venom. Um, both, both movies were real good, real entertaining, real fun to watch. I don't know why he didn't like it, but mm -hmm. I, me being a big fan of the Venom character itself, I love this version of it because it was a lot, for me, it was a lot better than the uh, Topher Grace version we got in Spider-Man 3. Uh, I mean, yeah, I can't agree. Yeah. Um, although, you know, the, some of the uh, CGI on this one was not as good. It was pretty bad. But, again, it was entertaining. I loved it. Um, I know people who don't like Tom Hardy. They see him as a trash actor. But I, I'm a I'm a fan of Tom Hardy. I love him. I, I know mean, I know he's gotten some criticism about the characters that he's portrayed as far as, like... Uh, uh, the Revenant, he was good in that one. I loved him in The Revenant. Yeah, but I'm talking about like when he when he does like a comic book movie or plays some type of iconic character like uh, the, I mean, the the Road Warrior. Um, I know he was getting criticized for that. I mean, he was good in um, it, even though he didn't say much. Yeah, he didn't say much, and and even in that that whole movie was was entertaining in itself. That it was just like all in your face it action. I've never you know, seen it. I still it's so it. good. Yes. He got real bad criticism from for playing Bane because of the voice. I love it. Because nobody can understand him. Okay. <laughs> it's like, you can just, just his eyes, though. Yeah. I, 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 I still love, love um, the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> so, him coming out and playing Venom, I was like, okay, cool. Let's see what he got. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I love Venom. And I love Solo. I think both of those movies were equally entertaining for me. And, Good popcorn movies. Yeah, and... I'm definitely gonna buy the the Blu-ray when Venom comes out. I do have Solo already, so. So um, do you know do you know what your uh, second best movie of the year was? Uh, mine's gonna be um, The Ant Man and the Wasp. I love that movie. It's an, again, it's another entertaining one. Um, I like where they kind of left off or um, reintroduced the character of Ant Man, Scott Lang, uh, Paul Rudd's character. Um, after the events of Civil War, mm -hmm. pretty much, um, you know, because it's a few years after that, um, he's under house arrest, he's, you know, got the, uh, the collar on his ankle, 
Um, but yeah, that, uh, that's gonna be one of my favorite ones. I like that one. <clears throat> I, I love Michael Pena in this movie. <laughs> yeah, he's funny. He was actually he, yeah. he, he, he kind of like steals it again in in that show, uh, playing the character he plays. It's a juicy. Uh, yes, it's a juicy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it was it was funny. I liked it. It was entertaining. Um, I know when you first saw the trailer, you were kind of like, oh god, they're bringing him back again, where he's a giant. Yeah, I was and, like, oh, they're going to do this again. But it actually worked. I liked it. Um, I, I saw it. I didn't see the theaters, but I saw it. I finally saw it. And I think when, I, when I rented it, I saw it twice. That's how much I loved it. And I was just like, this is, this is a really good movie. Same thing and with Solo. Again, going back to, you know, watching these movies in, you know, in what, you know, certain timelines, you know, that you want to watch them. Um, Ant-Man is pretty much taking place during the events of so, Infinity, oh, Infinity War. War yeah. So, because... Again, when you watch the uh, post credits, that's when you go. Um, that's when you know at the at that time is when that's Thanos snap. does the the snap and people start disappearing. Yeah, uh, because you get Hank Pym, um, Hope, and uh, Janet. Yeah, uh, all disappear. So. Well, uh, my number two, and it's a movie that I I keep telling you that you have to see because I know you love it. Given you know that you love this, this you know this period in movies, is uh, Ready Player One. That movie was it, like surprising for Did me. Did come out this year? Yeah, surprisingly, oh, I was like, at first I was like, oh, you know, I'm not gonna really dig this movie because I'm not too much of a '80s nostalgia kind of person. Like, you know, cool if you are, but I, that, that, that's just not what I was into. But when I watched the movie, I was like, man, this movie is awesome. And there's one it, sequence it in this have movie. '80s nostalgia. And they had pop culture. In general. Yeah, in general, yes, in general. You've seen Master Chief. Um, a lot of characters from. From um, video games, comic and, books, and, and from uh, movies, movies uh, yeah, I'm Gandalf, saying, yeah, Gandalf on there. There's a uh, there's one particular sequence in the movie that that they take straight from Harley Quinn and they take, and, they uh, take straight, Joke. yeah, they take straight from a uh, from a old horror movie and it's shot for shot exactly what it was and it's like oh like I loved it and uh, I'm telling you you should see it Ready Player One my second favorite best of this year Matt what's yours I totally forgot about that movie and I watched it too and I loved it but I mean aside from that one I was gonna do a double th- Kind of a double take, like Steven did, with uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and this little movie on Netflix called The Ballad of uh, Buster Strokes. Oh, I've, I've been hearing I've good been things hearing about good, that. Good things about that one. So now it's a Coen Brothers movie, so you're gonna expect like Coen Brothers filmmaking in the movie. I like that you brought one up that wasn't. But like, yeah, so you know, it was obviously it was on Netflix. It premiered on Netflix, but when I first saw it, I thought. It was just going to be about one character following this character throughout the whole film. And then I saw it's like, it's two and a half hours long? Why is it two and a half hours long? <laughs> and then, it, when I first saw it, I was like, okay, so we're going to follow this character named Buster Scruggs. This is his story. And then, boom, something happens at the end. I was like, what? And then it went off to a different story. I was like, so this is an anthology movie. Meaning it has like four different stories set in the West. And it... You know, my friend brought up to me, you know, shout out JP. He was the one that um, that mentioned it to me and I said, yo, you got to watch it because I know, I know you'll like it. Um, and I so bought, bought a six pack and sat down in my apartment and we watched it. And to me, it was a very, you know, classic Coen Brothers movie. Have you seen, you know, if, if you've seen those movies, like Country for Old Man, True Grit, mm-hmm. they, would take, they take that, that type of tone and bring it in to this movie, but also have a comedic feel to yeah. it. Because if you see the first skit, which is about you know, the Buster Scruggs, it um, it's very comedic. You know, he's he's singing, he's telling his story on how he's an outlaw and how he's like this famous guy, but also dressed like he's a very wacky person, dressed very wacky. And first 15, 10 minutes, boom, 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 boom shoot, shoots up a whole a whole um, bar. I was like, all right, so I see how this movie, I see how this movie's gonna gonna go, and um, I mean, going back to Iron Man and Wasp, Steven saying, you know, I love that movie. It was a different take in the MCU because it kind of it kind of it kind of brought your your uh, hopes back up after watching Infinity yes. War. <laughs> it was a yeah, it was very light tone to it. I mean, not too light, but it was still like. All right, this is yeah. a very different tone MCU movie that we all needed to kind of just yeah. boost our spirits back into this friend to this franchise and 
up into the, the whole post MCU, grade. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Up, up into like the whole MCU. It's like, all right, and then post crowd was like, oh, okay, so it now it reminded you. <laughs> it's like, oh, we forgot that Infinity War happened. Yeah, because watching that, the movie. That was that was one of the funny things when I went to go see the movie in theaters was. Um, you know, obviously, I always tell my wife and my son, hey, there's going to be something at the end. There's going to be something, you know, we got to stay. So we were watching it. And, you know, like you, like you said, you know, we totally forgot about the events of Infinity War. We know it's there. It's in the back of our head. But we kind of kind of forget about it. And then, boom, he's he uh, he's working with um, with Hope and her, par- her parents, Janet and, and Mike um, hey. Hank Pym. Michael Douglas is what I meant to say. It's, it's a character that's playing uh, Hank Pym. Um... You know, working with them, you know, getting the, uh, this energy from the quantum realm to help a new friend of theirs. And then for all of a sudden where he, he's ready to go back, get out of it, and he, they shoot back. And then all of a sudden, uh, Hope, Janet, and Hank are, are turned into dust. And that just kind of brings you back to like, because everyone's reaction was like, ah, oh! <laughs> like, oh, man. Not damn too. Like even even all of us even even my son did the same thing. He's like, oh my god, like no. That's one of the best post credit scenes that, that in, in MCU. Um, okay, well I mean, so we, what was we, yours? You never told us what your number two. No, was. I, I did. Uh, it was uh, a ready, ready, ready one. Oh yeah, it was ready. Player. So Time. now now we're gonna move to our. This is, uh, this is just hitting me up in the dome right now. <laughs> to our to our number one uh, best movie of the year. Matt, you want to start us off? So my number one best movie of the year is kind of an independent movie. It's called Sorry to Bother You. Best out of the blue movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, I know these guys said they watched it, but they haven't watched it fully. And no, I haven't seen it at all yet. I, I oh, just, it's, 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 I, it's, I, it's on my on my watch list. And it gets definitely. weird toward kind of like the third act. Mm-hmm. It's like, what? When I left the theater, I was like, what did I just watch? Did that really just happen? You saw it in the theater? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, that's when I had the movie pass deal. Oh, I, saw, okay. I saw it for free, and then that movie pass just went. <laughs> after like a month of me having it, and I was like, that sucks. "I'm not gonna, I'm gonna cancel this. I'm not paying ten bucks a month to just to pay for movies." When like the whole premise was to not pay for movies. Yeah. But I mean, aside from that, it was a very out of the it wasn't out of the blue, but what was in it was very out of the blue. It's kind of like a movie you had to pay attention to because it's a little slight details on what's to come. Throughout the throughout the film, um, so like you know, it all takes place in that kind of an alternate alternate timeline to where you know this big corporation is kind of in in motion. I don't know if you've seen like yeah. if you've seen like like the news broadcast that this corporation is doing this and that, and but aside from that, it follows this you know this gentleman who's struggling to find a job or like he's just struggling in general. He becomes, he becomes a, a telemarketer, and yeah, he, uses, he, he uses his white voice. He uses his white voice, which is voiced by uh, Pan Oswalt, and it's just hilarious because I don't know if you've seen uh, the gentleman with the eye patch and the beard. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that part yet, but he does also have his own white voice, which is pretty hilarious <laughs> in itself too. But I mean, aside from that, it was very out of the blue movie for me yeah, that I saw it and I was like I really like this movie yeah it, it's, it's a good movie I, I started watching it and I gotta finish it uh, but um, Danny Glover comes out in that movie also uh, mm-hmm. Steve Steven Yan or Yan from Walking Dead who plays Glenn in that movie so check it out sorry to bother you you can actually stream it on Hulu right now mm-hmm. so you know check it out um, and you what's Cheers. yours I want you first I want you yeah you you better have a good one uh, my um, my number one movie this year is an A24 movie a horror movie uh, Hereditary, uh, and it's finally came out this year. Yeah, um, and the reason I love this movie is because it's the movie that stuck with me the most after watching it. Uh, I've seen it twice, and it's a good horror movie. It's a slow burn horror movie, but it's good. It's 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 an independent movie starring Tony Collette and uh, Alex Wolf. Mickey Brown's and, uh, band. Huh? Mickey Brown's band. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but um. Uh, it was the movie that, that stuck with me the most because after watching it, I was just like, like I was deeply disturbed by it. I was like, oh wow, like this movie really creeped me out, and it kind of like left me with a eerie feeling. Which, I'm sorry, in my opinion, when a movie does that, you know it's good. You know, uh, it's just like, what did I just watch? This really stuck stuck with me. 
I showed it to my to my brother. We watched it on a Halloween movie night, and uh, he was just the same way. He was just like, "What did I just watch?" You know. So it, it's a good horror movie. Uh, A24, Hereditary. Check it out if you haven't already. It's a good movie. Just be aware that it does get pretty crazy and it will leave you um, just just disturbed, but in a good way. So, Hereditary, check it out. And last but not least, what's yours? Uh, so, in going and doing this, because um, I know one of you mentioned was a documentary, mm -hmm. um, do uh, stand ups count yep. as one? Because yep. I want to do two for mine. Yeah. Um, one of my favorites uh, that's, that was on Netflix. I don't know, you loved it. You told me about it. Which one we watch it? 100% Fresh. 100% Fresh. That's the honorable mention. Adam Sandler. If you love Adam Sandler, you love this, this stand up. It's not like a, like a jump out of your seat kind of uh, funny stuff. I mean, um, he, did, he, he does, he, he does, does like stick. singing, he does some skits. Uh, not skits, but like just, you know, some, some dialogue stuff. But. It's funny, it's hilarious, and when you get towards the end, it's where just, it it's just where it really gets you. It's, it's, it is 100% fresh, although uh, Chris Rock did something similar to that, because uh, the way it's shot is that he's, he's, it's shot uh, throughout a tour that he's doing, and um, it's so cut it, it's, cut, it's cut from different cities, and Chris Rock did something similar to that in one of his stand-ups. Oh, I can't remember the, the, the name of the stand-up, but um, um, yeah. So you know, other than um, you know what I was trying to say about the Chris Rock thing and all that, uh, that's he did something similar. But yeah, one hundred percent fresh. Uh, I'm Sandler on Netflix is uh, one of my top top ones to watch, even though it's not, not like a movie movie. But it definitely is up there. Um, but for me, my top movie for this year, uh, despite that we have a few that that are um, still need to come out for for the rest of this year, and despite that I haven't uh, seen a couple of, a couple of other ones that I do want to see. Uh, but for me, um, Bohemian Rhapsody was by far one of my favorite movies. Um, just I just love that movie. The movie was so amazing. Um, it, it it had it had its uh, its um, what do you say like I guess some issues with it because of the uh, the timelines that 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 they did with it and then you know just some of the stories that just they may have over exaggerated on. But other than that, it was it was it was an amazing show, amazing movie. I say show because. Um, in certain parts, you you felt like you were there. Um, I know my wife and I when we went to go see it, we were singing along, especially during the uh, the Live Aid um, concert. concert that they uh, that they redid, which you know it's almost almost um, like exact, um, but such an amazing movie, so good, um, especially for it being directed by Brian Singer. Yeah. Uh, who is also the director of uh, some of the X-Men movies. He didn't do all of them, but he did definitely do the first one, um, X-Men uh, Days of Future Past. Yeah. And granted, there was a little Apocalypse. controversy behind scenes as far as his directing, but it seems to have, that, that seems to have no effect on the way this movie was, was uh, shot and was made, shot and that it's, it's actually getting, getting praise from the fans, not too much critics. I don't, I don't get that, but um, uh, the... The fan score is pretty high up there, and, and, and the people who have seen it really, really like it. Um, but yeah, especially, I mean, especially when they do the uh, "We Will Rock You" song. I mean, you were there stomping your feet, like you were <laughs> at the concert singing along with them. It, it, like I said, such an amazing movie. Definitely my my top for this year. Yeah. So I mean, um, there you go. I mean, sorry to bother you. Boy, Rhapsody and Hereditary, or uh, are you know aside from Infinity War. Our, our, and, Deadpool our, two. And, and Deadpool 2 are our favorite movies of the year. Um, you know, check out, check them out, and you know we want to hear, you know, what was your favorite movie of the year? What was your favorite TV, you know, uh, of the year? And music, you know, that, you know, let us know in the comments down below. You know, we want to hear back. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is it for uh, for this year. Um, we've got a, a good amount of episodes out. Uh, we will be back next year, um, and we got a lot of exciting stuff you know, uh, plan for the future. So just, uh, you know, 
keep um, you know keep an eye out for that. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, uh, geeking uh, at facebook.com slash geeking drinking podcast. Um, on Twitter, Instagram at geeking underscore drinking. Um, you know we we're real active on social media, so you know say hi. You know uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, like I said, we have some very exciting things you know planned out. Uh, we're not done. We're not done with this. Yeah, this is our last episode of the year, but we're gonna come back strong next year. So I mean, just just be ready for that. Uh, I'm really excited about it. So. Uh, once again, I want to thank Hops and Grains uh, for, of course, allowing us to go to the brewery and, and showing us a good time. Also, so lot- be sure to catch that in our previous episode. It's going to be it's our episode 10. Uh, so check them out. Check that show out. Again, if you're in the Austin area, um, definitely go visit Hops and Grain. Uh, good environment, good place. Again, open from uh, 10 to 10 a.m. to 10. 10 p.m. Seven days a week. Uh, they serve coffee, brews, and um, we'll also have food trucks like uh, there. Uh, I'm not sure if it's every day or some days, but definitely they have food trucks that yeah. that serve food there. So, and you can find all this, you know, all this and more under social media. Also at uh, hopsandgrain.com. We'll have the link for you guys in the description. Um, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a good year. Uh, thank you. For all the support that you guys have given us, thanks um, for watching. Thanks for watching. You know, we said we want, we want to hear back. We, you know, we want to do a little more with you know with the viewers. You know, those of you who are watching, and you know, we, we have yeah, we to, want to interact with you guys a little yeah. bit more. So, so send us some comments. Leave us some you know some stuff. Give us some suggestions. Yeah. Um, you know, let us know. I mean, even if there's there's like a, a good Texas brew out there that you want us to. To feature that we can try to get in contact with and you know see what kind of relationship we can build just let us know and, you yeah. know we're, we're open to in, to anything and everything and uh, for this show we're doing a uh, our shout outs a shout out to George to Joel and to Dean uh, you know thank you so much for all the love on social media uh, we hope you guys are watching and I uh, you know you know if you haven't already check out the Pell Mosaic from you know hops and grains uh, but that's hopefully it, yeah. this will be available soon yeah. in the San Antonio mm-hmm. area. Currently not available, but they they are trying their best to get it available over here, down south. Uh, so it's it's really good, tasty beer. Um, I really enjoyed it. I know my brothers enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. So it's real good. Anything else you guys want to say? Want to give out? Okay, thank you yeah. um, again and. Uh, so just 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 uh, make sure to stay tuned like I said we have a lot of stuff a lot of stuff that we want to do and that we're gonna try to do so. and that we're working on so yeah. you know, to try to get try to make the show a little bit more interesting and then us just sitting here but you know it's it's, it's a work in progress <laughs> yeah we there's there's, to... there's always there's always something uh, we've, we've got ideas up the wahoo but you know it's just getting it out there but we're doing our best yeah so and again this is what this is our, our 11th episode we're shooting for the end of the year. Um, again, like Eddie said, it's, it's been fun. It's, uh, it's not our last, last episode. It's just our last episode for the year. But, you know, so be sure to stay tuned when we come back next year. Um, I hope everybody has a happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Be safe. Drink responsibly. Um, for Geeking and Drinking, I'm Steven. Eddie, you got that? Cheers.